Friends, today I'm going to talk about a condition which is fast becoming an epidemic in men over the age of 50 years of age. I'm talking about prostate cancer. Up till quite recently, this cancer was second only to cancer of the lung. But recently, with better investigative techniques, with better techniques to identify cases of prostate cancer, it has now become number one disease in men. What is this prostate gland, where it is situated. First thing you have to understand is that it is found only in men and it, it is not present in females. In men, if you look at this chart, it shows the bladder and after the bladder neck, surrounding the, the urethra, which is the tube which takes the urine out, is the prostate gland. Roughly the size of a walnut. If you imagine that a walnut has a hole drilled through the center part of it, through which the urethra goes, then you, you that's what prostate gland is. It surrounds the urethra from all sides. If it enlarges, then it may enlarge towards the urethra and cause obstruction to the flow of urine. But I'm going to talk about that some other time. What I'm going to talk about is cancer of the prostate affecting the prostate gland. One out of eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. One out of eight is a very big number. And the sad part is that 30 to 40 percent of these men would have advanced disease. Still, with all the techniques that we have at hand, it is still a problem. The risk factors that are involved are familial. It is seen that if the father has got the disease, the son is more, most likely to have the disease also. And these days, we do genetic testing to figure that out. There are racial factors. White men are, even though the environment is same, white men get less prostate cancer as compared to Af Africans staying in the U.S. Environmental factors, as uh, the extent of lead is, is increasing in the environment. Lead is one of the factors which can cause carcinoma of the cancer of the prostate gland. Sexual, it is believed that people who do not have, were not sexually active or have celibacy are more prone to cancers of the prostate gland. And lastly but not the least is the diet. Again, it is uh, experience more than research that a vegetarian diet is protective against cancer of the prostate. It is seen more in people who consume non-vegetarian diet. Symptoms and signs. First of all, we must realize that cancer of the prostate in the early stage did not cause any symptoms. There are no symptoms of an early prostate cancer. And if at all it's got early, it's because of either the screening that test that has been done along with the master health checkup now these days, or the patient has gone to the doctor because he's got lower urinary tract symptoms, symptoms due to prostate enlargement per se, not because of the cancer. And the cancer is an incidental finding. In the late stages, the symptoms are due to the metastasis or the spread of the cancer of the prostate. Typically, it goes to the bones and the patient may come with bony pain. When I was a student years ago and during my internship in house job, the diagnosis of prostate cancer was clinical and bony pains meant that you had to do a rectal examination in these cases find out the cancer of the prostate. Most, many of the cases landed up in orthopedics department with bony pain only to be found later to have prostate cancer as a cause and not the bone as a cause. Weight loss is non-specific so then in the good old times, we used to have a patient coming with bony pains. We used to do a per rectal examination, which means uh, by the index finger, we used to feel the prostate gland through the back passage. And depending on the of how the texture of the prostate gland was, whether it was nodular, whether it was firm or too hard, or whether it was soft, we could find out whether the patient has got cancer or not. Nowadays, there are diagnostic tests available, and the problem among those tests is their PSA level. Normal PSA levels are from zero to four, any rise in the PSA levels should raise the suspicion of carcinoma prostate. When I say carcinoma prostate, it's the same as cancer of the prostate. Now, PSA initially was thought to be diagnostic of cancer of the prostate. However, we have found out now that anything that goes wrong with the prostate gland, anything, raises the PSA level. So it could be just inflammation of the prostate gland, it could be infection of the prostate gland, the mere size of the prostate gland may be the cause of raised PSA. Therefore, a raised PSA does not necessarily mean cancer of the prostate and we have to do a biopsy to prove or disprove the presence of cancer. Nowadays, therefore, there are three things that are done. A rectal examination, uh, as I told you earlier, a PSA, serum PSA test, which is a blood test. What happens is that prostate releases a, an antigen into the bloodstream and from the level of, the, of this antigen in the blood, we can surmise that there's something wrong with the prostate or not. Zero to four means that the prostate gland texture is normal, although very rarely and in some conditions, even the normal PSA can have cancer of the prostate gland. From four to 10, there is a suspicion that it could be a cancer of the prostate gland. And above 10, there's a high chance, high probability that it is prostate cancer. See how technology has changed the game. Previously, the man used to be slim and the the TV used to be thick. Now the TV is slim and the man has got all this paunch and couch potato problem. So the diagnostic tests for prostate gland have also been refined. And now we have multiplanar MRI, PSM PET CT or PSM PET MRI. This is fast becoming a gold standard of diagnosing cancer of the prostate. Liquid biopsy is also coming in the horizon. And there are other antigens 
that can be used for trial for finding out cancer of the prostate. This I've already discussed PSA less than four, four to ten, and more than 10. Through the biopsy that we do, usually ultrasound guided, the rectum is very close to the prostate gland and we can go transrectally with very fine needles which take out tissue from the prostate gland and that tissue is subjected to histopathology or seeing under the microscope. There's a scoring system that is very freely used which is the Gleason pattern scale and in this there's a value given changes in the cell in the cytoplasm and in the nucleus. This is an advanced version you don't need to know about it. Suffice to say that if the score is less than 8 then it is low grade disease, low to intermediate grade disease and anything above 8 is high grade disease. The treatment varies. Classification of the prostate cancer because of the treatments that are available, we now grade the class, uh, grade the prostate cancer into three parts. Organ confined or localized prostate cancer, locally advanced prostate ca cancer, and metastatic or when the prostate cancer spread outside the confines of the prostate and its neighboring areas. Then it's called metastatic. Coming to the treatment of prostate cancer, again, when I was a student, the only treatment that was available was taking the testicles out because testicles have released testosterone, which in a case oh, that's already got seedlings of CA prostate, it increases the viciousness of the cancerous cells. In other words, the cancer cells thrive and grow faster if the testosterone level is high. On the other hand, if we cut off the testosterone level, then we can control the prostate cancer in this manner. It is similar to when there is a fire and you put oil into the fire or ghee into the fire. That will make it more volatile. Same thing with prostate cancer and the idea is to reduce the testosterone level, which in the localized prostate cancer is done by. So now let's talk about treatment of localized prostate cancer first. Localized, locally advanced and metastatic. These are the three clinical parameters that we look at. In a localized prostate cancer, which is not spread outside the confines of the walls of the prostate. Active surveillance is the new technology new thing that's come up. That means that if we feel that the prostate cancer is low grade, which is found out by biopsy and has not left the confines of the prostate, we can keep an eye on it. We can observe it over a period of time by repeating the PSA levels. And if the PSA levels start to go up, then we can intervene and do something. Otherwise, just keep an eye on it because prostate cancer is slow growing. Cancers are never good, but of all the cancers, prostate cancer is the best one because it's slow growing most of the time, it takes a long time for it to develop to a life-threatening situation. And before that, treatments can be given. So we can do active surveillance. Radical prostatectomy is the gold standard for localized prostate cancer. Nowadays, we have robots which help us to do the surgery. Many people think that the robot does the surgery. It's not the robot that does the surgery. It just helps and makes it easier for the surgeon to approach the areas which are deep down in the human body. Then comes radiotherapy. In cases where surgical treatment is not possible, for whatever reason, we can give radical radiotherapy. The results are similar, but radiotherapy has got its side effects, which are not there with removal of the prostate gland. By Nowadays, by laparoscopic or robotic surgery, open surgery is now done at places where the other two facilities are not available and the number is dwindling fast. Hormone therapy is one that is given only if other things cannot be done because the period of survival is less when only hormonal therapy is given. Hormone therapy means by either by surgical methods or by medical methods, you bring down the low level of testosterone and also add a medicine which can totally ablate the testosterone level. However, the cells develop a resistance to this over a period of time and an average two years is the time when the hormonal therapy becomes defunct. Active surveillance, as I said, is managed with six monthly PSA determination and DRE and annual biopsies. And it is indicated in low risk cancer where the life expectancy is less than 10 years. Radical prostatectomy is the gold standard for localized cases and at surgically, surgical approaches, as I said, is open, minimally invasive, laparoscopic and robotic nowadays. Most of the centers, good centers, have got robotic techniques available and here it is shown in this slide. The beauty of this procedure is that the surgeon does not stand by the side of the patient. He's sitting somewhere else in the same room and he is manipulating the joysticks of the console. This movement of joysticks in the console is transmitted to the movement of robotic arms which are placed inside the human body and yours truly on the console. Then there are other modalities of treating prostate cancer which is in IMRT which is a new version of radiotherapy to rule out many of the side effects that were there. Brachytherapy is introducing seeds implanted, the radioactive seeds which are implanted into the prostate gland. Hormonal therapy it involves androgen deprivation therapy. In advanced prostate cancers, we use chemotherapy, which are certain drugs which are effective in cases of cancer of the prostate, which is spread all over the body. And then you cannot do surgery. You cannot give radiotherapy to every part. We have the hormones that are given. And once the hormones become resistant, we go on go to step two, which is the use of chemotherapy agents to control the disease. This is the future of cancer of the prostate. The gene therapy is on the horizon. There are certain medicines which are available which attack the DNA, breaks and repairs the DNA 
so that cancer cells do not proliferate. Very soon we'll find that uh, depending on the genes that are involved in cancer of the prostate in a particular person, he can be given a tailor-made therapy specifically for that person to, to get the proper treatment. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for your patient hearing. If you've liked my video, please press the right like button. If you have some suggestion or comments to make or indeed a question to pose, use the comment section. And oh yes, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for many such videos to come. Have a great day.